Nick Hazard, um, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, for everyone else that's joined, uh, I see we have a couple that have already joined. We're going to give everyone sort of two minutes to join. Um, in the meantime, I posted a message in the chat. Please let us know where you're dialing in from. It'll be good to know uh, where you guys are all, all connecting from. Uh, if you have any questions for Nick afterwards, um, uh, his contact details are also there. Nick's from Local Knowledge, uh, the team that understand Cape Town uh, extremely well from experiences all the way through to what's best to do, uh, you know, if you're making your, your next trip here to Cape Town. So we'll start at exactly two minutes past. Uh, for those of you who are still connecting, see we've got a couple more connecting now. Guys, again, we want to keep this session very interactive. A couple of our presentations have been, our webinars have been more sort of around presentations. We're wanting this to be super interactive and please post in the chat. Where any questions, you can interrupt us as much as possible. We want to answer your questions in real time. Um, and Nick, Nick's obviously given his time to, to be here today for you guys. Cool, Nick, we're just going to have a few moments before we start. Uh, you can hear me all, all right? Yeah, all good from our side. Thanks for the... The warm intro, Sinj. Perfect. Just give another 30 seconds and then we'll start. Perfect. Nick, I think if you can just tell, take everyone through, you know, what is it that local knowledge and your team do? Um, so sort of how you came about. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, I, That'll be great. Awesome. Well, yeah, once again, so just thanks so much for, for having me here today. It's, um, yeah, it's really, really awesome to be here and, and to share, I guess, our local knowledge in that respect. Um, like you mentioned, I'm, I'm one of the co-founders of our company and, you know, we're, we're a team of experienced designers really on a mission to help the next generation of travelers really experience any new city from a local's perspective. You know, we want to help facilitate them creating lifelong memories and making meaningful connections along the way. And the way we do that is we achieve this through a commitment to four really essential values. It's authenticity, personalization, it's a community centricity, and it's this idea of experience. It's, you know, dedicating ourselves to providing unmatched attention to detail. What we refer to as the, I can't believe they thought of that, you know, moments of, of, of your trip. So our offering really is broken down into three different areas. Firstly, we provide really authentic um, experiences guided and led by our team of local legend hosts. We also provide personalized recommendations um, of the best hidden gems, uh, local happenings and events through our technology, our local knowledge travel app and our new concierge as a service model. And lastly, we also have um, weekly and, and, and monthly community centric events. It's our opportunity to connect our, our local audience and our travelers and, and really facilitate those connections. So yeah, that's basically what, what we do, you know, and, and, and since just from my side, we've had the privilege of working with Neighbor Good for and collaborating for quite a while now. And I think something that always stood out for me is Neighbor Good's mission, you know, this idea of not just creating value for your customer, but also providing value for local communities you know doing good to neighborhoods and um and and that's something that really resonates with us and it's something that we try to do on a daily basis as well so yeah really really happy to be here and looking forward to some awesome collaborations in the future cool cool nick i know um we haven't put out sort of too much detail about what we're planning together um but i think yeah, it's going to be super, super exciting when we launch that detail and just bring everyone in on the on the journey that we've been through till till to now i mean yeah, it's been so, it's so great to have you on the <clears throat> on the webinar for this topic i mean when we were sort of planning the next topic for the webinars they've been very very much investment focused uh, up until now mm. um and we wanted to have something with the arrival of summer we wanted to sort of get everyone excited about coming to cape town we know we this is the the week where we get a lot of our demand coming in from our digital nomads and remote workers mm. uh, living in and working in other areas uh, in anticipation for the Cape Town summer. And I was so worried when we were setting up this webinar that like people were going to rely on my information and <laughs> advice for what was happening. And I, I, I don't get out much at, uh, anymore at all. You know, I could maybe offer, offer people where the best IPA is, uh, <laughs> you know, being, being, being a dad, I could, I could offer that information where the best IPA is that's close to a, 
um, an area that's child friendly, you know, or some some child friendly space. That's about it. <laughs> so I'm super glad to have you on the webinar, asking uh, or or letting everyone know where where to go and what to do with your time in, in Cape Town. Yeah, awesome, awesome, B, and I, I I need to disclose as well. Um, you know, I'm not the the one stop shop. I, we have an incredible team of local experts that have that deep insight into different aspects of of of, of you know what what is that makes Cape Town so special. So we're leveraging local knowledge, not just from ourselves and our core team, but from our extended team of local agents that we work with for the content on our app. And yeah, I guess that's 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 where the magic really happens. Cool. Nick, the, the local legends that you mentioned, just give us a brief background, sort of what is their experience? Uh, you know, how did they sort of come about to join the team? Yeah, awesome. So, so, I mean, again, we've grown up here in Cape Town, so we were super lucky to have that initial connection into local communities. And it's often just been via word of mouth or, or, or via warm intro here and there being in the industry. But it's just so fascinating to see people with really unique bespoke talents and different aspects of, of, of Cape Town, you know, and they're, they're these like unsung heroes with such incredible stories that often, you know, aren't seen or aren't heard, you know, um, for experiences, for example, we've collaborated with incredible people like Roshana Gray. She's an ex professional, like uh, chef that worked in like a Michelin star kitchen. And she's now devoted her life to sustainable ocean foraging and workshops where they're teaching people how to live off the land, basically. Um, so that's one, one, one example. The other one is, you know, we've worked with storytellers and our culture and community category. And one of the gentlemen we worked with is an ex gangster that was part of the 28th gangs. He actually went to Polsmore prison and he turned his life around and, you know, is now this exceptional entrepreneur also involved in the event space. And he just has this unbelievable story that 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 wasn't heard. And just via you know the the effort that we put in to try and get hold of these local legends, we were able to build this knowledge base that is is truly exceptional in, in, in my mind. And some like I said, some really extraordinary stories out there. So I guess that's one of our our goals is to really expose these incredible people and these incredible locations around our our city and our country. Amazing, um, Nick. I mean, your team have really sort of you know, not taking the normal stuff that you see on TripAdvisor, you guys have gone so much further. And I think that for us is, we often get asked for people coming to our spaces, you know, what is it, what is it that you guys do in Cape Town as locals? What do mm. you guys endorse as, as, you know, things to do that you recommend that you would spend your time and money on? And I think, you know, it's, it's often be far beyond those, those items. I mean, we spoke about the other day that we hardly do, you know, some of the stuff that's the most recommended in mm. terms of mm. the traditional tourism that you see out there and um and it's great to see so i think you know when we chatted earlier nick you mentioned that you guys have surveyed so many travelers um in your product discovery process based on your guys findings what do you guys see as the top reasons that people travel in general mm -hmm. and what do they look for uh, uh, you know when they're coming to visit a, a place specifically for these longer extended stays like uh, gotcha. like our members do yeah yeah so it's such a i mean I can imagine just like you experienced since, you know, starting a business, you're not just the CEO, you're also the CMO, you also do the books. And, you know, in our case, we actually were in the beginning, early days, hosting every single experience ourselves as the co-founders. So, you know, in our first summer, I actually remember it so clearly, we'd wake up at like 4 a.m., prepare all the different vehicles I about to go out for the day, we'd do some marketing, do the bookkeeping, get in these vehicles host these, these guests on these incredible excursions, come back at 9 p.m., wash the cars, and maybe find some time to, I don't know, do a little bit more marketing or prep for the next day. And we did that seven days a week for, you know, our entire first season. And not only was that just an incredible way to sort of get a deep understanding of your product, coming from a product background, a product owner background, I use this as an opportunity to sit with my, my desired target audience and my customer for nine hours of a day and ask them all the questions about, you know, what are their deepest travel desires? Why are they traveling? What are the main problems that you're facing? And the answers could almost be always categorized into, into a few different things. Firstly, people were traveling for self-discovery, for self-improvement, you know, people really want to immerse themselves into new cultures, new ways of lives in order, in order to gain a unique perspective. They're also looking to, to break routine to get out of their comfort zone and even challenge themselves. Uh, additionally, we saw, you know, as humans, we have this innate curiosity to us, this desire and this desire to create, you know, lifelong memories and to really bring meaning to, to our lives. And, and I think that's something that, that travel 
does so so well and last is to to meet people you know we're, we're social beings at the end of the day and this desire to create meaningful connections is like ingrained in us you know um, and this has only been fueled by by COVID in the past few years so in my opinion and just from our research and and, and from the product discovery that we continue to do today these are just the, the the common reasons why people are traveling and what do people really look for when they're looking at a new travel to the destination we kind of broke it down into the five main categories of first and foremost adventure and outdoors uh, and also this isn't an order this will probably change depending on the city depending on the person but it's basically adventure and outdoors it's food and drink it's the lifestyle it's culture and community and it's nightlife. So those are the main categories that we see resonates most, especially with this audience that you're speaking about. 100% Nick, I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, from our perspective as well is that, you know, we're trying to be a hospitality and property company that connects with people in a real um, authentic way. So, mm -hmm. you know, we wanting people to have good, warm experiences. Uh, you know, Murray, our CEO has driven that hard over the last while is to, is to make sure that people are left, you know, feeling in a better uh, position than when they arrived with us and that they feel the warmth and kindness and they feel like, you know, you're mm. arriving to somewhere where, where, where it is actually you're part of a community for your stay here. And, and it's not super transactional. I think, you know, with a lot of the yeah, traditional tourism and traditional hospitality and property companies, it's, it's, it's quite transactional and, and uh, it's not easy to, to maintain mm. that. I mean, it's one of the hardest things to, to make sure that you keep at it. Um, so that's uh, I fully agree with with that statement. Nick. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, treating treating and it's, like that sense, like treating people like people. You know, it's that human element that that can sometimes be lost, and that's that's the real that's honestly the heart of it. You know, like so often we'll forget what airlines we we flew to a destination. You know, but we would remember that incredible air hostess. You know, who 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 really had that impression on us. Or if we arrived at that hotel, that one gentleman or, or lady that took it upon herself to to provide you with all the information of where to go, what to do. Um, that's that's the point of difference. It's the human element, in, in my opinion, for sure. So I definitely agree. 100%, 100%. Um, Nick, just switching back to sort of Cape Town mm. uh, as a specific preferred destination for lifestyle travel and people looking at, you know, working here and living here for extended periods of time. Um, Cape Town's been trending as a lifestyle city for digital nomads and remote workers. We're seeing people come back year after year now. In fact, they're wanting to book every year, um, mostly over the summer period, but even in the winter, you know, it's becoming their, their go-to destination for, for those, those few months. Why, why in your mind is, is Cape Town trending as, as a lifestyle city for digital yeah. nomads and remote workers? Yeah, gotcha. Um, I think, well, again, first, first and foremost, disclaimer, I've, growing up in Cape Town. I'm a local, so I'm probably incredibly biased, <laughs> but I 100% I agree. I think it's one of the most exceptional destinations in the world. And, and it's particularly for this, this growing next generation of traveler, millennial, Gen Z, uh, digital nomadism, you know, these, these type of trends, solo travel has become an incredible destination for, for all these, all these different um, types of, of, of travelers. Um, and I think it's for a variety of, of, of reasons, you know, and, and again, that sentiment is not just 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 my, like my own, it's, it's, it's shared, you know, Cape Town was voted uh, the best travel destination in the world several years back and, and for several years it's been the number one uh, voted destination to travel to in the African continent. Um, and, you know, from chatting to customers, again, it's kind of broken down into a few different areas. Like we, we can't overlook the level of affordability that is gained from the exchange rate difference. But it's not, I don't think, I think it goes a little bit beyond that singe. I think it's the quality of life that you can get for the cost is exponentially better than any other of the competing, let's call it third world currency markets. Um, you're getting such exceptional bang for buck. Um, at the same time, what was a recurring thing that came in our product discovery was this, this, this combination of this natural beauty, but the atmosphere and the vibe of the city and the diverse experience that can be had across all those forementioned categories. But that, that diversity extends a step further because it's also culturally, it's the people, you know, we're, we're this rainbow nation because we're this melting pot of all these different cultures, backgrounds, religions, languages, all coming together in one place, which adds just so much more flavor to, to the experience and, and so much more diversity to it. And it's something that should be truly, truly celebrated. Um, additionally, something that can't be overlooked is the fact that we do have a really strong traveler and digital nomad infrastructure in place. 
but not just the infrastructure, but actually the communities as well. You know, people uh, want to be around other like-minded uh, travelers that want to experience the city in the same way. You know, maybe with the work ethic of doing the eight hours, but exploring there afterwards. Um, and on that note, it is also a suitable destination for a European guest because we're on the same time zone. Lastly, I think one thing we can't overlook as well is the North Southern Hemisphere and the seasonality. You know, travelers from first world countries, Northern Hemispheres, like why wouldn't you want to live like swallows and, and escape the winter <laughs> and come down to Cape Town for, for, to, to escape it for, for, for six months or, or less? Couldn't agree more, Nick. You know, through this winter, I think we've had we've had what they say is the wettest winter in the last 40 years. I don't know if it's true or not. I'm still waiting for someone to send me the facts. But, uh, you know, it's been a very cold and wet winter here in Cape Town. We're all looking forward to to the summer coming. Um, it almost seems to happen overnight now. Like it just mm. the weather changes all in a short space of time and everyone's out again and everyone's doing things. I think Cape Town it doesn't get that cold, uh, you know, relative to, to other places, mm -hmm. but it's certainly more of an attitude and an mm. atmosphere thing yeah, that, that changes um and we find you know i think it's it's more than just it's more than just the you know euro dollar rand arbitrage it's 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 more than that like you said it's we it's not just the cost of living that's that's driving it it's the lifestyle bones mm. of the city it's the and it's all in a small geographical sort of circle or bubble like we like to call it here in cape town mm, because yeah you know, we often get asked the question, why are we not expanding to other cities in South Africa? And and our, our answer to that is we don't see other cities or, or other dense population areas that offer the same mm -hmm. as what Cape Town does in a, in a small geography. I mean, Cape Town probably compete with the top cities in, in the world, you know, in terms of its That's lifestyle really. offering and, and value proposition. So we, we fully, uh, fully believe in, in Cape Town's value proposition and, and we'll be continuing to invest here in Cape Town mm. uh, to increase infrastructure for digital nomads and, and sort of short to medium term stays and, and hybrid living That's and work really stays. So I think, yeah. I think for exactly the same reasons as you, I don't really have uh, much to add there at all, in fact. So. Yeah. But it's also because we see on the same page. If we speak about that diversity, like those five categories you mentioned, since it's such a unique, again, value prop to tick all those boxes, to have something for adventure outdoors, but also now have this emerging food and drink culture. You know, some, some cities around the world, you're going to get one or two uh, and that are going to perform really well in those categories. But just to have the diversity across all five is, is, is truly exceptional and quite rare, in my, in my opinion. Nick, that uh, actually leads me to my next question. Uh, in terms of Cape Town, I mean, you mentioned food and beverage. You know, we've got an amazing food scene, restaurants, mm. uh, markets. Uh, we spoke about a little bit of the high lifestyle, beaches, hikes. Can you take us through your your team's top recommended things to cool. do uh, in Cape Town, in, endorsed by you guys as locals? Yeah, sure thing. So, um, how, how much time do you have? I suppose this is like um, trying to choose your your favorite child i mean it's there's so much to choose from so maybe i'll do this i'll, I'll just break it down into those five categories and i'll and i'll speak about um the first few um ideas that come come to mind you know um if we start an adventure in outdoors something that can't be overlooked is just the incredible experience we had by doing a sunrise hike or trail run or mission up table mountain it's one of the seven natural wonders of the world but it is, yeah, we love our mountain, uh, we, 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 we preach it, that's honestly, it's like, <laughs> but for good reason, I said, it is such an exceptional experience. So, so I always encourage guests to maybe go about one of the lesser known routes um, and enjoy, really enjoy like the whole journey on the way to the top. There's so many incredible vantage points and you're actually immersing yourself into fame, uh, to our local biome, Fambos, which is actually the most diverse biome in terms of fauna and flora in the world. And it's, I mean, what there's no better way to start your day realistically. At the same time, we do have growing rock climbing, trail running and hiking um, scene here in Cape Town. So definitely tapping into that is a, is a must. Um, and then obviously outdoors taking advantage of the many blue flag status beaches that we have here around the Western Cape. Um, you know, if you're a surfer, we're quite lucky with uh, the stretch of peninsula being divided into what we refer to as the warm and the cold side of the peninsula. Warm being the false bay, cold being the Atlantic seaboard stretching all the way down to, to Cape Point. Forewarning, if you swim in the water at either side, you're going to really uh, understand really quickly that it should be classified as the cold and the slightly less cold side of the peninsula. 
But uh, in terms of our surfing, our kite surfing, there's such a massive scene here. It's uh, honestly for kite surfing in summer, like the mech, one of the meccas uh, in the world. Um, as previously mentioned, incredible beach foraging opportunities with some of the local, the local experts. Uh, free diving the kelp forests with companies like Cape Town Free Diving, or maybe even doing like an early morning sunrise paddle with, you know, a company like Atlantic Outlook. Um, just some of the many activities you can do. Another really cool thing is the fact that we have these weekend getaway opportunities just within an hour or two drive, where you can go and stay in beautiful little eco cabins in the middle of the mountain and get some 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 peace of mind and some solitude. It's definitely something I would I would highly recommend. Um, so if we look at the food and drink as well, I mean, then, like you previously mentioned, since such an incredible merging cafe and coffee culture, um, that, that is sort of, that has really taken off in the last couple of years. We also have a really strong, like weekend market culture with spots like a or, or the, the, the old biscuit mall market, which, which is also just a great way to get a, a variety of, of food and drink in one place. Um, and at the same time, if you're looking and interested in fine dining, there's incredible, incredible offerings, which insane bang for buck at spots like Lacka Lorm or Chef's Warehouse. Um, what's quite cool about Cape Town is also this emerging craft beer, craft gin scene, which I highly recommend taking a look. And um, can't obviously uh, undersell the wine estates where we are blessed with some exceptional wine and some truly, truly phenomenal tasting rooms of spots like Babylon Storen. Constantia Glen, um, Telegraph, etc. Uh, if you're looking for more of like an experience side, there's um, there's the Boerkop region, uh, Cape Malay quarters have a variety of incredible um, cooking courses and cooking experiences with locals where they teach you how to make Cape Malay um, meals with the local spices um, or a really cool eating experience called Food Jams where you go as a group wine, loud music, and you get taught how to make some some pretty amazing local local cuisine. Um, so stop, stop me at any time, Sinj, if I'm going on for too long. But um, No, no, please. I think, you know, well, this is the uh, the whole intention behind it is to yeah, give exactly. everyone, you know, insight what, what what they should be doing here in Cape Town and what, what we do and what we recommend. Gotcha. Uh, I think that that's so, I, I mean, um, you, you spoke about a couple of the, you know, the hiking or, the, you know, Round Table Mountain. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Obviously, Lion's Head, everyone knows about the Lion's Head hike. If you haven't done it, please do it. It's it's really worthwhile. It, does, it, it lives up to the hype, um, especially if you, I like to go early morning, generally, where I go before mm. work. That's kind of how I actually experience Cape Town is before work, generally, or early <laughs> on a, a Saturday morning. So I'm one of the, the, the strange ones that do the cold dips in the morning when I can. Yeah, I, got I don't you. mind the cold water, actually. It's, it, it's, it's good for me. So, but... um. There's so many else. I mean, India Fenster as well mm. is a great little hike, um, which is not as well known. Uh, the wine farms, even, you know, you've obviously got the ones up here in the Constantia Wine Valley and we've got, you know, Franchuk, which we'll chat about uh, a bit later as well. But you've got, you know, even the Durbanville Wine Route. Um, yeah. We go out that side as well. There's some amazing places there, um, which which are great to spend your time. Um, yeah. You mentioned craft brew. Uh, Craft uh, beer. I mean, that's sort yeah, of a that's your that's your area moment. of expertise. Isn't you? Yeah. So, um, but in your mind, where do you where do you go, Nick, for a, for a good a good draft? Yeah. Um, you know, since there's there's all these incredible breweries rocking up uh, through the Woodstock area. Um, spots like Jack Black probably extend a little bit further down with their tap room, Devil's Peak, some of these amazing spots. Um, they've also integrated really well into the nightlife scene as well. So it's not like you're going to a restaurant and you're stuck ordering the same staple commercial beer every single time. There's these incredible brands, some of them you haven't even heard of, that are, are located at all these different restaurants around the town. So I strongly recommend trying local as much as possible because there is so much variety. And the same with the gin scene as well. These beautiful gin distilleries that have popped up all over Woodstock, like Hope Gin, Cape Town Gin, etc., all with a really cool story and a really cool background and i think that's one point as well that we really try and push home with our experiences is is, is this idea of local as liquor supporting small local businesses rather than going mainstream and you know buying clothes from the main stores support the cool local brands that are offering something new something bespoke signature one of a kind um and it is such a cool emerging industry like that um uh, in, in cape town based on the support um, but yeah, Sinj, I mean, there's there's so much to do. I mean, we can really extend, carry on for days, but 
you know, if we look at the other categories like like that we spoke about earlier, like lifestyle, there's also this emerging wellness scene in South Africa and Cape Town now in particular with, with incredible retreats and studios offering some some really amazing solutions. Um, one of the festivals that comes to mind is, is Retreat Yourself, which is a, which is this unbelievable weekend away, which is it's more than just music and dancing. It's it's incredible workshops and a way for you to really tap into that that self improvement, like we spoke about, and um, chatting culture and community. I think one thing that I always try to push home for everyone coming to Cape Town is it can be very easily you can be very easily distracted by the the mountain and the beautiful beaches and the villas and the Clifton. We have to remember that there's a large portion of our population that don't live on in villas in in, in high 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 wealth areas. Um, there's you know this this idea we refer to as townships, informal settlements, that a large portion of our population are living in, uh, and these are such incredible locations with with such amazing energies. I, I strongly suggest everyone to experience it. Uh, and there's two ways you can experience it. There's one where you can jump on a bus, an air conditioned bus, and you can be given a guided tour through it, or you can immerse yourself deeply with the local in these locations. And obviously we always lean, to, lean towards the latter. Um, you know, our friends Ayanda and Buntu, they own a, a company called ABCD Concepts, and they provide these immersive cultural experiences in Kailiche, which is one of the fastest growing townships in South Africa. They do things from like morning runs um, through, the, through the location, meeting small business owners, um, to, you know, nightlife experience on a Sunday night at the iconic Rands Bar. Um, it's something that I strongly, strongly recommend someone someone experiencing. And then also they'll be connecting to some of the various NPOs and NGOs that are around town. You know, um, most notable ones that we've worked with in the past have been like the Sentinel Ocean Alliance, who are taking kids from at-risk communities and, and, and helping them, teaching them life lessons through exposure to ocean, ocean activities such as surfing and swimming. Um, spending a day like that is, is in my mind, a truly like a, a non-negotiable, like one day of your itinerary at least needs to be devoted to, to, to experience in Cape Town from that lens. Um, and then like, I guess the last category from us is like nightlife. Um, something that can't be overlooked is the summer outdoor festivals in, in, in Cape Town. We're so blessed to have these, these events at some of the most stunning locations and, and most notable ones would be like the, the Lost City Festival, Pangea, Medium, um, Bazik or, or Africa Burn. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, I can go on forever since, but I think what's, if anyone is looking for more information, um, like I said, we have our local knowledge travel app, which provides all these recommendations and we also offer free uh, concierge consulting. So you can book a time with us and ask us any questions you want and we'll, we'll happily lead you in the right direction. Nick, it's good that you mentioned the app. It actually just reminded me, I was, uh, someone posted in the chat uh, just a little while back about the app specifically. They wanted to know if you had an app and how that all works. Maybe take us through the app quickly and, and you know, what, what, what the app was designed for and, and uh, how it can, can benefit our travelers. Yeah, absolutely, Sinjin. I think it's uh, the, the, the problem that we identified both from, you know, starting local knowledge experience and then um, just chatting to our travelers and then being travelers ourselves. We know this, like you said earlier, Sinj, that the city has so much more to offer than just the top five recommendations on TripAdvisor or Google. Um, how, unless you have that connection and feet on the ground, how do you get that local knowledge and that inside access? So what we do is we create a, a, an app that's your all access digital passport and inside guide to what's happening in the city real time. So it's a way for you to book your connected living, your, your you know, your co-living, your, your co-working, your experiences and your events, all those tickets in one place. It's also a place for you to discover those really authentic, personalized and trending recommendations curated by our team of local legends. And then lastly, it's a way to connect to this extended community of travelers and locals alike across the city so that you can potentially meet up and go on these once in a lifetime experiences with, with, with new friends. So that's, that's pretty much the overarching arching concept we've launched. And um, yeah, I've got some really, really exciting stuff lined up for, for, um, for the coming season. So we can't wait to, to, to share that with you. Um, you can find out both uh, Android and, and iOS uh, just under local knowledge travel. Nick, yeah, I th I've been going through the app a lot with our discussions and, and what we got planned. And I mean, it's so cool to see, you know, firsthand experience of a lot of your guides or your 
Um, what you had a term that you used to describe them? What did, what did local, you... local legends, uh, hosts, local legends, yeah. local legends. Cool. That's one um, way yeah, we just... try to, sorry, since that's one way we try to differentiate ourselves. Like again, we spoke about old school tourism, treating people like just numbers. We always say we don't do tours, we do experiences. We don't have guides, we have local local hosts. Um, so it's just our way to sort of hammer that home. Hundred percent. I mean, when we, it's the same with us. You know, we want our community managers to give people recommendations based on what they want to do mm. and what we think is going to add value, not because we've set up some collaboration with that off tour operator. You know, like a lot of our traditional stays, uh, you know, I've seen that way. When I've travelled, certainly as well. You know, you kind of get the the hotel concierge come to you and and. Mm sell you on the five top you know most asked for tourist uh, trips and and that's kind of not how we see travel or where we see travel going or we, what we want to be a part of we want to yeah, have these real authentic experiences that that we ourselves would do and and, and spend our, our time doing yeah 100 percent aligned we mentioned the uh, cape town's proximity to some places that are you know within a day's trip away or you know an hour or two uh, you know short car ride away um maybe just Take me through your top recommendations for somebody spending some more time here and maybe wants to get out of the city for a while. You know, we, there's so much to do in the city, but there are these mm. amazing little towns that are that are close by. Yeah. You take me through your your top recommendations. Yeah, I got you. So, um, I mean, there's obviously the you know if you're going for the full South Africa trip, then you're extending up onto the garden route and you're going up to some of the the, the places up north. Keeping it like closer within within um, let's call one day proximity of, of of Cape Town. If I had to choose one, um, again this is my personality, so I would say it would be under the adventure outdoors category. I would choose a day mission to either Crystal Pools or Suicide Gorge. So what both of these are is oh, I really want to do Suicide Gorge. I've oh, been, let's get you out there, man. Murray, I actually asked Murray last year, I was like, do you want to do this in Jan? Oh, that looks like such fun. No, no, it, you... is, it, is, uh, it is an awesome day out. Eh? So just to give our, our, our other listeners just an idea of what it is, you, you basically hike up this nature reserve, this gorge, um, uh, parallel to the, to the river, and, the, and you get to the top, and there's these incredible waterfalls and rock jumps where you basically start at the top of the gorge, and you will be referred to as kloofing. Uh, rock jumping and to make your way down and you know some of these jumps range from two meters to 20 meters uh, and it's just this exceptional day out uh, and it's it's a lot of fun and i promise you 20 meters doesn't look <clears throat> that high from below obviously from top it's a lot different um and it's yeah it's just it's, it's an exceptional experience and again one of those maybe lesser known activities to do um yeah, it's one of the experiences we run, but also if you're looking to elevate that, there's a company called uh, Absail Africa who does waterfall, waterfall abseiling through the one section. They also offer an exceptional day out. No, Nick, I'm definitely going to take you up on that. I've been meaning to to do that for quite some time now. That looks like so much fun. I've watched a couple of YouTube clips on it. Um, definitely like to do that. Yeah, awesome. I think for me, for me, one of the ones, and I am a little bit biased here because we've got a location uh, that's just opened up in Franschhoek, but, you know, just to go and spend for a quick one night mm. or two nights stay out there, there's some of the best restaurants out there. The wine is unbelievable, you know, with a wine tram experience where you sort of get on the tram and the bus and they take you around to different wine farms. That's a, a really nice day out, um, mm. which I recommend. And I know it's one, it is one of the more touristy type things to do, but it's, you know, it's something we do as well. And we love, love going there. Yeah, and that little valley is just so beautiful. I mean, you just, it's so, it's so different to, to, to what's around. And I think, you know, the, the West coast, which people don't mm. often go up, but like Langerbahn, you know, those, areas, those areas, also areas. Less wow. well, oh, it's just some magic, magic so areas beautiful. and unbelievable seafood. I mean, I don't know where, where else you can do, you know, multiple courses of seafood at, at, at affordable rates in those areas. Um, yeah, I think there's there's so much. I mean, there's, there's some honest on the other side. If you are spending um, more time here in Cape Town uh, and you spend, you're spending staying with us for a month or two, whatever the case is, please venture out. There's so much in and around Cape Town. So you could, if, if it's, you know, you think you've done everything in Cape Town and you spend most of your time mm. in the city, you're only scratching the surface. There's so much more. Yeah, I love that about your model as well. So you, you mentioned your new spot now in Franschhoek and how you are looking at you know, this cluster model, but some of your really unique locations, maybe on the exterior as well. Um, that just gives these travelers, like, I guess, such an incredible opportunity to spend 
to experience all these different aspects and pockets of a city under one brand, um, yeah, I think it's, it's it's exceptional. And like you said, Franchuk, what a what an incredible place. Yeah, Nick, we we trying to connect you, you know the dots of the city and the lifestyle offerings as such, mm. so that when you live with us, you're not just you're not sort of married to one property or location, and that you can move in between our locations, mm. co-work from here for the day. Uh, you know, move to France, uh, you know, for a weekend or a week stay and, and meet people there and have a completely different mm. experience with us. And all our locations are very much contextually appropriate to the area. So they're very, very different, um, which is which yeah. is cool. Um, Nick, some of the things about Cape Town, I mean, we often hear the word, I hear it often from people who move down from the other cities in Cape Town, like Johannesburg and Turban, <laughs> that we Cape Townians here are quite clicky or it's hard to break into new, <laughs> new or, or establish networks as someone moving in. I mean, <laughs> what are your tips to meet new people in Cape Town and, and you know, enjoy these shared experiences together to, to find like-minded individuals such as yourself? Yeah, yeah, I got you. So, um, no, like you're not the only person to hear that. It comes up very, very often. And again, like maybe I'm a little bit biased because I'm from here, but I, I, I've also been a digital nomad. I've also traveled to and worked remotely from different places around the world. And I've noticed that it's not just a Cape Town thing. It's actually, actually a universal thing, you know, especially in a location where there's so much going on, like Cape Town. Everyone's just so busy doing different things that how do you how do you really break into these communities? It's 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 honestly something one of the main problems that we want to try and solve with our tech. But there are existing solutions out there which which I'm I'm more than happy to share. You know, there's these online digital nomad groups on platforms like Facebook and and WhatsApp, which are a good starting points. Um, you know, they come with their own pros and cons. There's also obviously the neighborhood and local knowledge weekly meetups, events, um, and activations and happenings, which is a great place to meet both locals and fellow mm -hmm. travelers alike. There's also obviously can't overlook the neighborhood co-living and co-working spaces around the city. Um, and yeah, jump on board with one of our local knowledge experiences. I mean, I don't know, or even another experience provider that, that's, that, that we can recommend that are doing some pretty awesome, unique things. We always say we want to try and maintain a road trip with new friends atmosphere on every single one of our experiences, getting people from all these different backgrounds in a, in a, in a, in a combi for the day, sharing stories, you know, great way to meet new friends. But also what's quite cool in, uh, in Cape Town is there's a lot of outdoor and adventure and or actually not just outdoor and adventure, there's these clubs and communities across categories. Um, so starting off with like running clubs, there's um, Tuesday Trails Trail Running Club. There's the running. You get a beer club, after you run the trail, right? Yeah, well, absolutely. <laughs> like this, so it's a, it's a good, it's a right. no brand. That's what, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> so, so there's uh, cool communities like the Promenade Monday Skating Community. Every Monday during summer, they get together and skate the length of the the Seaport Promenade. You know, there's for those interested in wellness, there's so many yoga studios such as Yoga Life or The Loft, great way to meet people. Um, climbing gyms like Block 11 or, or, or City Rock, they also have a really cool community of like-minded people. Um, there's, there's a few really cool hiking clubs, including a female-only hiking club, which I've heard is a great way to meet fellow, fellow female travelers. Um, yeah, another cool, cool community is the Friends Who Volley uh, Volleyball Club who link up every Tuesday during during summer on Clifton Beach. And for those like Singe wanting to get a little cold water immersion in the freezing cold Atlantic Ocean before work, there's a cool club called uh, the Cool and Cozy, a Cozy Club, which um, is also full of a bunch of really awesome people. Amazing, amazing. Um, Nick, I'm, I'm hoping at some point we can put a little guide together for people. I mean, we've mentioned a lot of places and, and spaces to go, I think. You know, it's obviously all cool in the webinar, but maybe we should collaborate on a on a nice guide, uh, or at least a you know places guide. I mean, you've got the app which is there. Actually, actually, in fact, that's what your app is there for. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've already got it. But yeah, central. But we also do to collaborate with the neighborhood team to to write a few blogs and a few 100%. articles on app and yeah, love. make things bespoke for 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 your clients. Love to do that. Love to do that. Um, Nick. Just moving to, you know, tips on coming to Cape Town for the first time. We get asked a lot by mm. people, you know, potentially wanting to come. So we get a lot of people like we've heard good things about Cape Town. It's this amazing city, but we've got a few, you know, concerns. Um, you know, what are what are the, what are what should people be traveling to Cape Town know for their first trip about getting around, mm. safety and security, all those things. 
Um, and what, are there any things that specifically people shouldn't do when they come to Cape Town? Yeah, so it's a really good question, Sinjin. It's something that we, again, through our product discovery, learn quite quickly. It's, it's not just about inspirational recommendations and all these incredible things to do. There's, there's, there's utility in knowing the basics, you know, knowing the basics of like, how do I get around? Um, so for that, for that question, you know, we always say our public transport falls short in certain respects in, in, in Cape Town in particular. You know, it's quite a tough city with mountains, you know, between regions and it's quite geographically widespread. So I always just encourage Uber as the safest and most consistent and easily accessible solution to transport and getting around. You know, it's something that comes up so often is, and, and people always ask about safety. You know, safety is obviously something that needs to be considered when coming to, to, to any city around the world. And you know, even though in, in, in Cape Town we we as locals understand that our you know high crime rates are often concentrated in certain pockets in certain areas of the city, we always just encourage our, our, our clients and our guests to be informed when coming to this destination, to to not be a naive traveler, to be an, uh, sorry, not to be a naive tourist, but to be an informed traveler and to be conscious of your surroundings. So things like not walking in the city by yourself at night, um, walking down the street as ladies, knowing that your handbag's in front of you in case of pickpocketing, you know, um, not carrying a lot of cash, a lot of jewelry on on it, uh, on, on your on your persons, excuse me, while walk, while while walking around the city, um, going up hiking trail with a group rather than going by yourself. Um, you know, at the same time, it's something that we take for granted because we've grown up here, so we've been brought up with this awareness of being conscious around us. You know, some people from from European cities haven't been haven't grown up in that environment so you know we've written several articles on our app about you know safety in south africa things to look out for so i would strongly recommend taking a look at that before going another consideration is where you want to stay so like i said the city is ex extremely dis like dispersed across the, the the peninsula it really depends on what are you what are you coming here for so if you're coming here to spend a month to work and to be engaged in the city then areas like you know, within the CBD, Seapoint, Greenpoint, even as far as Camps Bay are, are really good options. Now, if you're looking for more, I want to get a little bit, you know, off the grid, I want to chill out for a little bit and, and maybe be slightly away from all the action, then spots like Ladadno or further south, like Museburg, Komiki or Constantia and, and the Winelands would be a better bet. So it really depends on what, on what you're looking for. Uh, yeah, you know, I said we could go on forever for this one, but there's, there's also some a lot of questions about visas and currency exchange all that uh that's i suppose a separate topic but um yeah especially for the long stay travelers the, the visa extensions is, is something that comes yeah. up very often and the one the one thing very not to do just to find to, to finalize there um what i always encourage people is come to cape town with an open mind you know don't get bogged down with the sensationalized headlines that you've read about crime um or some people's you know, people telling you that it's unsafe and all the stuff that I actually haven't been here before. Um, again, be conscious, be informed, but but make your own perception when you when you come. Yeah, I think uh, Nick the same. We you know we get asked that question a lot, and and we say you know there is um, there is that element of of safety, but you know for our part, we like you said, we've grown up with it. We know what it's like. We you know you're aware of your surroundings. And when we've had incidents, which have been very rare, by the way, like um, with, with our mm. members who've stayed with us, it's largely been because of them not being aware of their surroundings or putting themselves in a situation mm. that us as South Africans, you know, just wouldn't be in, um, have, having mm. known and grown up in this space. So, I mean, I walk throughout the city, I walk into certain areas, uh, you know, it's not it's not something that, that I necessarily feel, uh, you know, detracts too much from 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 the Cape Town experience, but it, it is something we need to mm. think about. So so it's more just I think where you're staying. If you're staying with us, please chat to the community managers uh, at one of our locations. Join for one of the events and activations for that week. You know, find out about where where to go. And and, and everyone's that's the thing with Cape Town. Most people are, are willing to help. You know, if you say, listen, this is what I'm thinking, mm. people will, will will help you. Um, we don't have too much more time. I think we want to try and keep, uh, no, keep no to the next five minutes or so if we can. I know everyone's sort of wanting to get back to their to their work um, for spending spending some time with us. But just Nick, maybe in a in a twenty four hour like your ultimate day in Cape Town. What is your absolute best day in Cape Town from start to finish? Right to put Ooh, you on okay. putting you on the um, spot here, but put you on the spot. 
okay again probably just my my personal preference and and and, and who i am um i think starting off getting on the mountain for sunrise is a, is a no-brainer maybe making a little morning coffee on the mountain uh followed by a cold dip maybe in a at a spot like uh, better beach i don't think there's any better way to start your day uh, i think going from there and having an amazing cup of coffee and one of my favorite cafes like um, the strangers club cafe or, or ground art or origin um i would say that's probably go be be the next step uh, followed by a really good breakfast um maybe a nourished hill for example uh, at the neighborhood hill that's also like a really really incredible uh incredible add to the to the morning uh there afterwards okay look i'm gonna have to do some work so i'm gonna head into one of the neighborhood locations um either the Bree street co-working or the cape court uh, or even work from from the nourished cafe at hill um depending on the day of the week if i could squeeze in like a little market mission maybe tap into some of the local stores and, and buy some some really signature unique authentically made local souvenirs so maybe like the watershed market um, local brands for me personally as a man would be like uh, uh, freedom of movement float apparel just cruising to name some of you uh, maybe even tap into a little bit of the thrift shop uh, theme that's around city as well get some get some cool some cool gear okay cool so now we're about like afternoon evening I think it wouldn't be a summer's day in Cape Town without uh, sundowners. So that's uh, a picnic drink, uh, some snacks at one of the various lookout spots. I would say either uh, Millionaire Rock or maybe Buckoven for sundowners uh, before going off and, and, and having dinner. Um, one of my favorite spots is a small place called Pizza Shed. Um, try out one of the local craft beers there, maybe even try or one of the local uh, GNTs at a spot like like uh, the Secret Gym Bar. Um, so yeah, there afterwards I'll see what's happening on the local knowledge app and maybe go for a little bit of a, of a jaw, so what we call party here in Cape Town. Uh, so yeah, I think that's my ideal day. But this is our last one actually, Singe, is if the Rugby World Cup's on and there's a Springbok game, that's something you have to do maybe at like one of the local dive bars like dice tavern or, or vasco's book a table in advance but that is an exceptional experience and highly definitely recommend. definitely i mean uh, that's something we absolutely love across the country is is our rugby team and i mean coming up uh, i'm super excited about the rugby world cup i can't even actually explain how excited i am i, I was excited leading up and then with the with the recent games even more so i think nick yeah, well, yeah. my my best day in cape town is not actually that far off yours i mean it's 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 not as jam-packed you can tell i'm a dad i've i've got got some <laughs> limited time and doing like you know three things is a lot for me on a on a day off i think for me definitely the cold dip uh i enjoy starting the day that way so much just clear my head get in the cold water just feels super good about uh about myself um I would probably then join a CrossFit class, you know, something like Motley Crew CrossFit. They've got an amazing gym here, mm. um, or two gyms, in fact, one in Seapoint, one in Cape Town. Um, I actually train further out our side at a place called Unbox Fitness, which is a very cool, but um, but I'll probably join a, a CrossFit class, get the heart rate going, uh, get get everything up and ready for to start the day. Also a cup of coffee. Um, I don't have a specific coffee spot. I tend to move around a little bit and, and try different things. There are lots of cool coffee spaces. I mean, uh, I'm not even going to mention them. After that, probably working from one of our co-working spaces, maybe Bree Street or Cape Quarter. You know, there's a lot of energy there. Um, if I want to get some deep work, I might, you know, go to go to the, one of the other spaces like Reserve, um, and then just you know get get sort of the the Core, core things out for the day. Early afternoon, if I can knock off early, which never seems to happen, but if it, if it did, I, um, <laughs> I'd probably steal from what's currently my Saturday routine and, and head off to one of the, the brewery, craft breweries like Aga Brewery in, um, in Nurduk. Oh, oh, yeah. Exceptional there. Yeah, very cool. uh, or Stark Brews in, in Durnville, which is our, our local. Um, and Consumers Clough, really amazing beer there. Uh, and pizzas and just an unbelievable setting. I mean, Rob, Rob uh, Stark, who's who's the brewer there, he's great to chat to. He knows so much about beer, and he's just passionate about it. It's it's really really awesome. And then I would say um, early evening, probably also watch the sunset somewhere. Um, 
I used to uh, I used to do a lot of work and functions. You know, when you went down to Otterkral Beach, there. Uh, you know, I just passed Camps Bay. That's like a really exceptional way to sort of end off the day. The evening and jaws, I don't, I, I'm not there anymore, Nick, to be honest. It's not something that I, I know too much about. I couldn't even tell you what the places are called <laughs> or, or what they're about. I think for me, it would be home after that and a, an early night's sleep so that I can hit it again the next morning. So that would be my, my yeah, top Cape you. Town day. Yeah, that's an awesome, awesome day. So Nick, you. thanks. Sorry, we didn't get too many um, questions in the chat. I see they have asked again that just the name of the app, um, if you could... It is local knowledge, right? Sure, it's, local all, knowledge. it's all under local knowledge, guys. Perfect. Um, thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. If you want to ask any questions before we end off, please pop something on, on the chat quickly, and, and we'll get to it just before we end off. I think, Nick, thanks again so much for your time. I mean, you guys, you know, you're very busy with, with what you're doing, and we know a lot more about what you're doing because we've been working together. Um, we... Uh, I didn't really introduce too much about myself in the beginning, um, but we I'm one of the three co-founders here at Neighborgood. We run, we own and operate a series of living and workspaces, providing infrastructure to uh, modern uh, travel consumers, digital nomads, remote workers, anyone who's looking sort of short to medium term accommodation. We do offer longer term stays as well. Um, but generally, people who, you know, staying here a year or more look for sort of traditional um, residential accommodation. Although if you're looking for something that's fully furnished and fully serviced and you, you know, you, you want to be more uh, nomadic in nature, certainly our, our, our spaces would, would work for you. Um, our contact details are in the chat. Um, so for us, you can just send an email to hello at neighborgood.co.za and our reservations team will be in touch with you. If you want to know more about uh, Nick's experiences, his Nick's details is there as well uh, at, at Local Knowledge. We do recommend that you uh, that you hit them up if you're looking to to do any sort of, especially if you're looking to do something custom. I mean, Nick, that, that's so cool about, you know, you can build uh, experiences around, you know, people and what they want to do. That's That's really amazing um yeah absolutely nick anything you want to add before we close off i see we don't have any more questions so anything you want to add before we end off uh no since i probably think we we covered quite a bit so of how to live like a local here in cape town um thanks so much for your time and yeah you guys do some really really exceptional stuff so we're very very excited to to see what you guys do in the future amazing nick um yeah we're going to release some information shortly just on on what we've been collaborating on i think you know, we are uh, venturing out of Cape Town, which is new for us Cape Townians. There's another city uh, coming very shortly, <laughs> which is which is quite far away, um, and that's you know what Murray's been been driving, uh, you know, for for the most part of the last couple of months, which is super exciting. And we'll hopefully release something similar to this, um, but we'll have some you know some local local guys on the ground on that side. Absolutely, awesome. Man. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Nick. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, Thanks, Take it easy. Thanks so much, everyone. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Zach. Bye. Bye.